Hi, John Lovely to meet up with you again and do some further work on your game. Um, obviously, we looked at the aim point to start with, forwarded the notes across via email on that. Um, talked a little bit about your chipping and how adding various variables obviously will affect the flight of the golf ball and how those variables need to match up with your style of, of pitching and chipping uh, because of the release point you tend not to suit a high overtaking rate one thing you do need to do um, is to get the ball higher you'd want to add more loft maybe than a lot of guys would you need to adjust the ball position a little bit adjusting the ball position brings into play some low point issues uh, but the one thing that you must do when you're chipping um, you know, around the green stuff chipping in particular is keep that chest moving throughout the shot um, failure to do that gets the shoulders steepening too fast um, affects the position of the center of the swing relative to the golf ball uh, and as the shoulders tilt too quick the club tends to bottom out a little bit too much behind the ball once you've done one of those you tend to increase the shaft lean you combine the two left shoulder climbing too quick uh, and backing up shaft leaning forward too much that's the one you catch a little bit thin so keep the chest moving the more the ball goes forward for the super high one the more the chest has got to open up to move the swing direction to the left and keep the low point forward uh, regarding your long game the keys to consider first and foremost are continue to build on what we did during your first visit which is controlling the length of the backswing and ensuring that we turn the corner through the hit. Uh, those two things are the two things that will make your swing functional. So it's not the finished article but you can go out and play, you can keep the driver somewhere on the golf course and it gives you that sort of base to build from. So from a baseline point of view uh, we want to make sure the accumulator for the left arm is controlled and that we're turning the corner through the hip so that we encourage the, the club to get a little bit more in line with the hands, certainly not dropping behind us as fast, um, not coming up and out of the shot, so we're getting back into flexion. Once we're back into flexion, we can learn to, if we need to, extend a little bit more, um, and you could extend as much as you wanted, depending on what you wanted to do with your ball flight. So the two images on the screen at the moment are you at the start of your session, on the left, which is a big improvement on where you were on your first visit, the club would drop behind the hands uh, massively at that point, arms would swing much further back. And sort of midway through your session, uh, certainly over at the studio, we were asking you to feel like the top of the backswing for you was P3.5. Um, that was the sort of the image you had in your mind. And you can see the, that it keeps the club head slightly above and outside the hands as we discussed. From there you're in a super position to just come straight back down, shaft hitting the mid bicep and then club getting nicely in line with the hands at P6. One of the things that we touched on was the condition of the club face and we talked about that club being at times a little bit open, uh, a little bit too much if you will, sort of toe back, so sort of toe falling back. And that would lead to a shot that would just sort of start a little bit right and occasionally just sort of bleed off to the right. And we talked about the position of that club face and how it can be affected. We can do it through your attachment, uh, holding the club in a, in a slightly less open position. We could do it by changing the wrist condition um, during the downswing, so putting some palmer flex, some bowing of the left wrist during transition. Um, we can actually work that in during the backswing um, or we can work it in at setup. Now you have a number of options, uh, there's no right or wrong way of doing it however if you can put something in at setup um, it's much easier to control, much easier to police etc and therefore much easier for you to repeat. So the drill we did we just get you up from face on was to change your setup position uh, we did this through a drill, obviously this is not you hitting shots um, flat out. We asked you to push the pelvis and the handle forward at setup to really get everything moved forward. Because one of the things that you tend to do, um, we touched on it in your first session, is you tend to have a sort of handle back, shaft sitting quite vertical. It was actually more this way on your first visit. 
So things are starting to move in the right direction. However, we just need more of that in there. So we're pushing the handle forward. Um, you can also raise the handle a little bit if you wanted to, but mainly pushing it forward. As you do that, you're flattening out the lead wrist. So you're actually creating the sort of condition that you're looking for at P6. You're introducing a little bit more of that. Uh, as you came into impact, the thing that we noticed was that the body was going forward and the handle was sort of hanging back a little bit. When we do the drill, we're pushing the handle forward, we're pushing the pelvis forward, and we're just trying to hit some little shots, trying to feel like we're maintaining that condition. So everything handles more forward, shaft is leaning forward more, we talked about pressure point three, sort of moving more downwards this way sort of pressure in that right index finger against the shaft when you're doing the drill. Left shoulder stays lower for longer, doesn't climb quite as quick, tilts in the shoulders, change a little bit. All the sort of things, when you're doing that drill, there are all the sorts of feels and things that you want to be trying to create. When you look at it down the line, when you're doing the drill, which is a swing on the right, the toe end of the club doesn't fall back quite as much. This one here is pretty sort of, pretty neutral toe up maybe one degree back we've now got the club leaning forward just a fraction the lead wrist is a little bit flatter uh, it's not the finished article having said that you know you can still play good golf with that lead wrist condition it would require you do, to do um, different things p6 onwards um, which again you know you'd have to raise the handle a little bit more um, you have to roll accumulator three a little bit more to get the ball to draw. Um, it would be a little bit more, the one on the left would be more conducive to hitting little fades. The one on the right would be more conducive, the position of the sweet spot relative to the hands would be more conducive to hitting a draw. Uh, however, the face to pass relationship would have to be a little bit more appropriate, a little bit more sort of toe down, which would be produced by sort of bowing out this lead wrist a little bit more. And like I said, that can be done at set up it can be done in transition, um, it can be done during the takeaway. And we could also change that face to pass relationship by attaching ourselves to the club slightly differently. So we'll see how that goes. I think that pushing the handle forward, you can see there, it certainly moved the sweet spot in behind the hands. So your ability to hit out at the golf ball in an appropriate manner will improve, um, you know, without extending excessively. You've just got the club in behind the hands nicely. A lot of good stuff in the move on the left. Uh, certainly can play golf with that, and it's just a case of fine tuning that as we go. But the un overlying or the underlying theme of the whole thing is to control P4 or control the top of the backswing. So that feeling for you is P3.5. The job's done. Keep turning the corner down at the bottom so the golf swing's playable. Uh, and then keep adding that detail in as and when you need it. I think by pushing that handle and pelvis forward at P1, doing the drill, getting familiar with the feels involved, I think you're going to see that wrist, wrist condition change certainly enough uh, to get rid of that little fade shot that you were sort of talking about the other day. Um, if you then wanted to add more shape, we could look at adding some detail to that. Good luck with it. Got any questions? Don't stand on ceremony. Yeah, if I don't see you before, well, I won't see you before. And have a great Christmas. Hope you and the family enjoy it. And I look forward to meeting up in 2017 to do some further work. Well done.